<laughs> I saw that on your website. You do Zoom calls with goats. Yeah, I am so excited to hear everything <laughs> that you got going on. Thank you, John, so much for uh, making the time. You made time quite a, a ways back and scheduled this. So I really appreciate you doing that. And um, it's really fun to talk to you again. Uh, we conversated over email when you were planning this build. And then here we are months later, springtime, and uh, we get to talk about it. So it's a really exciting thing for me. So thank you. Well, me too. And in fact, that's one of the reasons I, I went with Maker Pipe because you guys were so helpful when I was planning this build because sometimes I can get three dimensionally challenged. So um, I think you guys even offered to sketch out what parts I needed. And that was really that was really nice to see. So you guys have been great. So thank you. Yeah, it, it's my pleasure. That's our goal to help people pull off their project. And mm -hmm. you have such an interesting project. I mean, I have to tell you that when I tell people what can be done with Maker Pipe, you know, I say you can do, you know, shelving and utility kind of stuff. And then a lot of the times I mention you and your project <laughs> just because it's it's a total, um, you know, Weird it's a new definitely. concept. Not a lot of people know about what you do. And it's a real shocker about the creativity and use as a maker pipe. So, um, you know, we've we've talked a little bit through email, but would you tell me and kind of summarize what what you're doing? Sure. Um, so I run a small company called Goats of Dover, G-O-D. <laughs> we say you got weeds, call God. Um, goats, uh, a herd of eight to 10 goats can clear a quarter of an acre of land in about seven days. And they're just eating machines. Um, and it's a super green process. Whereas they pull and tug on the plants when they're eating and then they, their hooves aerate the soil. And because they have four stomachs, their poop is super clean. It doesn't have any viable seed material. So once they eat their way through an area, they're not replanting it with the invasive species that you're trying to get rid of. So that's our primary business. Um, uh, and we've expanded that to goat yoga and uh, goat Zoom calls, as I just mentioned a minute ago, and goat birthday parties, and basically any way to monetize the goats because they got to pay for themselves. Uh, I've been in advertising and marketing my whole professional career, but when COVID hit, uh, I got laid off and decided to start a company. Uh, and knock on wood, it's been it's go been going well since then. So well, at the time, really excited. I'm I'm glad to hear that. Congratulations on on you know the success with this. Sure, thank you. Um, when I first started the business, I was carrying up to 13 miniature Nigerian goats in my Jeep. Um, and that quickly became not very sustainable, especially if we wanted to ramp up and actually try to make a living doing this. We needed to be able to transport more goats and more flexibility. And um, it's not easy to get 13 goats in a Jeep, I can tell you. Um, <laughs> so I, I bought my first trailer, a nice aluminum trailer, which you have a, a still of before the build. Um, do you mind if I put it up there? Sure, that's fine. Okay, let's see. Um, so we've got a lot of media that you shared and then... Um, yeah, there you go. Maybe uh, maybe so we should do this before you yeah. get going. Yeah. Uh, I think we don't want to get too far into this without a, a cute goat photo. <laughs> yep, that's Buddy Jones. That's we Buddy. Remember, we got six weeks ago he was born. And there's Goats of Dover. Oh, we like to, awesome. We like to say got weeds called God, like I said. Um, yeah, right now we're just finishing up kidding season. We've had 11 babies in the last month or so, and we have another mother who could go any minute. She might go while we're talking. Um, so yeah, there's a trailer before the build. And obviously if you put goats in there, they wouldn't stay in there. So we had to figure out a way to build up a top. Um, they do make really great, you know, aluminum livestock trailers, but they cost a ton of money. Um, and I didn't have that. So we had to figure out a way that was to build a really safe top on that was functional and um, flexible. And so I started hunting around for all kinds of different solutions. And I found Maker Pipe, which is pretty easy to imagine kind of the frame you could make for the top. Uh, but I also had to figure out a way to build sides and a roof and all kinds of other stuff. And that's where the project began. Yeah. Yeah. And that's when we started talking. And yeah. Um, I, I would like to know, though, what got you interested in goats? Because this is a unique business. Tell me about that kind of origin story. 
Uh, sure. Uh, it was actually on my, on my wife's idea. <laughs> she showed up one Sunday afternoon with three baby goats. Uh, we had talked about it maybe once or twice, but she just decided to go and do it. And she said, come on outside. I have something to show you. And there were three baby goats in the car because her friend was getting goats the same day and it had already set up a paddock and stuff for them to be in. Uh, so they went and stayed there while I started building stuff here. And four years later ish, uh, I'm still building stuff <laughs> to uh, take care of the goats. They have a whole climbing structure behind us and we have up to three goat barns now. In fact, the, I think you can see the edge of the metal barn over here. Uh, that was one I threw up really quickly because we had a bunch of goats coming in and that's actually all made out of maker pipe too. Oh, that's fantastic. Just with so, plywood melted, yeah. Yeah, it was it was your wife's love of goats. Did she have any idea the commercial viability of goats? She just likes baby animals. <laughs> <laughs> we've had we've, we've had uh, one one of our goats, Daisy. Um, she was the one of four when she was born. She was born in in the dead of winter, and we were in Massachusetts in pretty bad winters, and she was the runt, and she would have gotten kicked off. So we took her in the house and. She lived in the house for the first three months of her life and had a diaper and a onesie and slept in a crib and uh, <laughs> imprinted on my wife as her mother. And babe, and uh, Daisy just had her very first baby just about four weeks ago. Oh, wow. That's neat. Congratulations. Thank you. So we went from three to, I think, seven to 12 to, um, I to be honest with you, I don't know exactly how many goats that we have back here right now because kidding season's happening and it seems like we're getting a new baby every day oh wow that's fantastic and then and then somewhere along the line you wanted to take that passion for the goats and then turn it into uh, something that supported that that I mean I'll call it a hobby but it's it's more than that right I don't know what yeah. the right word for it is but that's no, okay I mean it evolved from it evolved from just the fact that we both my wife and I both love animals a lot. And, and then I just started learning more and more about goats because I had them. Um, and, you know, kind of a little bit out of desperation, needed to have some income coming in uh, after getting laid off because of COVID. Um, just started small and started doing a little bit of goatscaping here and there. And uh, I think I placed one ad on, on a local like message board up here called neighbor, next door neighbor or something like that. And it, it blew up pretty quickly. So, um, you know, we're trying to build it very slowly and carefully and just do a really good job one, one job at a time. And, uh, so far it's been good. Yeah, that's, that's fantastic. And I'm glad it's taken off for, for you, you and you're finding success with it. Um, that's really an amazing thing. And I, I wish <laughs> you guys the best, you know? Thank you. Yeah, it's a big switch. I mean, like I said, I was, uh, I've been a creative director in the advertising and marketing space my whole professional career and done some pretty big work. And to go from, uh, you know, leading a team of 30 or 35 people to leading a team of 30 or 35 goats <laughs> is kind of a <laughs> weird switch, but it works. Right. Yeah. So which is easier, goats or <laughs> team of people? Depends on the people, I guess, but that's a yeah. good question. But goats are kind of like people. I mean, some of them, some of them talk a lot. Some of them hardly talk at all. Some of them are really hard workers. Some of them aren't so hard workers. I have some really smart goats. My goat named Sugar. I can say, Sugar, go jump in my Jeep, and she'll just go and run and jump in my Jeep. And I have one goat named Tess, who I say, Tess, babies. And she'll grab a bunch of babies and put them in the right barn they're supposed to go in. And Oh, wow. They're pretty amazing. And I have, yeah. some, I have some goats that aren't quite so smart, too. <laughs> wow, that, that sounds really neat. That's cool. And um, I've got your website pulled up sure. because uh, I, I want to show that because I think the, the goatscaping is such a, a unique thing that I'd never heard of before. And I, I'm guessing a lot of people, you know, haven't heard of it either. But um, when you say this is the goatscaping part uh, on your website, but when you say an invasive species and that the fact that the seeds don't translate in the poop, I mean, that seems like a... Uh, like like a great solution to a big problem. Yeah, it's real 360. You know, we we don't use any chemicals. We don't use any gas power tools on site. We're trying to keep it as green as we possibly can. Uh, goats were actually um, written into the original master plan for Central Park as the means of keeping that clean and tidy uh, in perpetuity. And they've kind of, I think they've waned over time, but they're starting to come back. So it, we're really just leveraging 
the goat's natural ability and natural love of, of eating invasive invasive plants. Like they love poison ivy, you know, they love bittersweet. They love all the stuff that people don't like. Um, and we've recently started working with some really high end horticultural landscaping companies who can come in and plant native species after the goats move through. So we come in and clear it and then they'll come in and plant plants that are supposed to be there. Because over time, I think no matter what geography you're in, uh, people have brought in ornamental plants from other parts of the world. And, you know, sure enough, a lot of times these things will just take off and crush the, the native species that are kind of supposed to be there, you know, per nature's plan. And uh, we're trying to encourage folks to get back to, you know, the, the type of vegetation that was indigenous to the areas that they live in. Wow. Yeah, I, I think, you know, you're in, in Massachusetts, right? Dover, Massachusetts. Yeah. Um, do you get a lot of kudzu up there? Yeah, we get some kudzu. We get a lot of Japanese knotweed, which is nasty. I can tear, I can pull down whole trees. So bittersweet can too, really. Um, and it's it's most of the plants that are really bad it got, came in from other places. That's happened every part of the country. You know, there's 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 biospheres that are just getting really messed up because there's stuff there that's really not supposed to be there. Right. Right. Yeah. So the goats will take care of kudzu just as well. Yeah, I think that I, we don't get a lot of that up here. I'm pretty sure that's on the list. I mean, that's, that's actually a really good point because people think that goats have, you know, a cast iron stomach and they can eat anything, but there's actually a lot of plants they can't eat. Oh. And we keep a list on our phones that uh, Cornell University Vet School keeps updated. And we also have some apps on our phones that identify plants. So we cross-reference those two things before we put in goats into any environment. Um, it's weird, you know, there's a, there's a tree here that's uh, just a wild, it's a wild cherry tree. And it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful tree and the goats can eat all they want as long as the leaves are green. But when the leaves start to turn brown, a chemical reaction happens in the leaves where they actually create cyanide, which can kill a goat. So we have to be very much on our toes about what's there and what's, what we have to keep them away from. So we pull anything that's dangerous by hand or we fence it off. Wow, oh, that's fascinating. That's interesting. Very interesting. Yeah, I mean, I'm in the South, uh, in South Carolina, and a lot mm -hmm. of kudzu. I mean, yeah. That well, I went, to I went to college in South Georgia at El Paso State University. So, oh, great. Most of my family's from the South. Yeah. <laughs> hey, so, you know kudzu very well. Yeah, I know kudzu. I know a lot of bad plants. Yep. Yeah. Like, I think a wisteria, too, although it's beautiful at part of times of the year, right? That can really take out a good uh, part of the vegetation. There's all kinds of weird stuff out there, man. It's like, I was just, you know, I, if you asked me two or three years ago, if I'd be reading about this stuff, I would have said you're crazy. But like I was reading about uh, a parasite called deer worm, right? So deer uh, get infected with this parasite. And when they poop, uh, these slugs come through and they're just doing their things as slugs and they get in into the deer poop and then they become an intermediate host for this parasite. And if goats go and work that wetland area, they can pick up some of that slime and it can kill them. So it's, oh, wow. you know, nature is really complex and really beautiful, um, but you really have to have a high sense of responsibility to put these animals into something that, you know, could hurt them if you're not really careful. Yeah, yeah. I know I, I had an evergreen uh, plant outside of my, my home and in the springtime, and it's coming up on that time again, but there were these, uh, larvae or insects growing in the pods, the branches wow. of the evergreen. Wow. And they were moving around and coming out. It was, it was wild. I couldn't believe yeah. that nature would do that. I, I learned something new every day about this stuff. Just being out in the woods a lot. I mean, you just see stuff like, what is that? You know? yeah. Most of yeah. the time it's benign, thankfully, but uh, you can get into some nasty stuff. Yeah. Um, and th I, that's only one part of your business model too. I mean, I, going back to your website, you've got... Um, visits uh where you bring people out to the to the farm right and see the yep. goats yeah and then we, yeah we have visits that we have here at our place and we also have what we call goatograms where we go and bring goats to you for a play date or birthday party and stuff like that and that's thankfully that's been uh going real well especially during the winter where the goat the goatscaping season is not really happening until things green up so that's kind of kept us going just doing a lot of goat visits and you know there there are times where we we have a whole lot of those going on which is fun because i'll tell you i have not left one of those visits without people just in a great mood because the goats just chill you out they're uh they're very very zen 
Yeah. I think my, my favorite one so far is a, it was an 86 year old woman who had lost a cat a few years ago. John, I'm sorry you broke up for one second. You said there was a, a an 80 year old woman that. Yeah, there was, went to a birthday party for a six year old woman and brought a couple baby goats. And she had lost her cat a couple of years prior to this. And uh, boy, she sat outside in a lawn chair on a really nice spring day. And that baby goat just fell asleep in her lap. And she was just so happy. And uh, that's the thing. Going on those visits, you know, it can be a thrash sometimes if you have a bunch of them in one day. But everybody leaves in a great mood. So it's 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 beat selling socks, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's heartwarming for sure. That's great. Cool. Um, and then you, you can Zoom with a goat. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, this is weird. It, um, uh, three or four years ago, when I was still in advertising, I was I was on a, a conference call with the, some pretty high up people at Google one day and that we had a goat living in the house at the time. She was just a little baby and she just ran and jumped on my lap and put her head up onto the, the Zoom call. And uh, the folks at Google said, we're never having another conference call without a baby goat on it because it was just really <laughs> fucking chill out. So it's yeah, they, that's her there, the little girl with the uh, onesie on. That's Daisy when she was a little baby. Yeah. And then uh, you've got the cast of characters there under the Zoom. Are you seeing that where the. All yeah, yeah. Well, I have to update it because we've had a whole bunch more. But yeah, the, most of them are up there. <laughs> that's great. I love that. That's really neat seeing that. Uh, and then, you know, I, I, I just think it's so interesting. So forgive me for going through your whole website, but That's like, okay. you're, yeah, right. It's okay. But, um, yeah. The, and then goat yoga as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I study yoga pretty, pretty seriously and, and my wife does too. And, uh, we both got our teaching certificates a while ago. And, um, so we offer goat yoga classes and the goats just kind of hang out with you. And sometimes they'll climb on your back and sometimes they'll just fall asleep on your mat and they just kind of wander around and, and, uh, go, your goats are real natural climbers. So they're, they will often climb up on your back and just hang out there. It's, it's, it's really cool. And it's just kind of, um, they just put off such a great peaceful vibe that I think it helps people just relax and have fun doing it. So it's, uh, it's just kind of a goofy thing to do, but we have fun doing it. Yeah. Yeah, that's fantastic. Well, thanks for telling me all about Goats of Dover. And if and if anybody watches this and is in your area, greater area, I mean, that's there's a lot of cool stuff there. So they should no, definitely you. check you out. Thank you. Um, um, but, you know, going back to the the problem that you had, uh, you described it as uh, you, you were putting all the goats in your Jeep and that was impossible, right? <laughs> And you needed a way to transport the goats to the different places uh, to do the goat scaping and different things. Um, so you bought that off the shelf trailer, which is a total uh, smart move on your part. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, you needed a way to customize it to, uh, to hold the goats. So what, what were like the main objectives, the things that were really important? Yeah, well, thing one, obviously, uh, was to keep the goats really safe, especially going down the highway and stuff and not having things blow in and could hurt them or whatever. Um, uh, also to rig it so that we could have two separate herds in there of eight to 10 goats each. So there's a there's a gate in between and a gate at the end. So I could put 10 goats in and then put another 10 goats in. So if we have two stops to make, we can just open the first latch, let 10 out, and the other 10 will still be in there and let the second 10 out at the next stop. Um, and also wanted a place like a shelf to put uh, all of my tools and uh, batteries and stuff like that. So we built the shelf on top where you can put all, all that stuff. Uh, and it's worked out great so far. Yeah. But, the, you know, just figuring out a way to get a roof on it. You know, I, uh, all my barns have tin roofs. So I, I was able to figure out a way to use uh, uh, pipe hangers, uh, tons of pipe hangers. <laughs> Probably, I definitely overbuilt this thing. Um, as the main source of holding the roof down just with quarter inch uh, nuts and bolts all the way around, but there's a lot of nuts and bolts. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm glad you did because when when you said, you know, we, the goat safety is number one, when we were talking about the build, I was like, yeah, absolutely. We need a solution that isn't gonna, there's no questions about it, right? That you're, yeah. um, is it a herd of goats? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. the herd of goats stays, stayed safe. So that was, um, that stood out to me for sure. And I'm glad we talked about that, but I've, I went back in our email and I, I found, uh, an early sketch that you did when <laughs> we we're communicating back and forth. Do you, 
that is it, you recognize that one yeah i do <laughs> yeah made, made on pages if you believe it uh, <laughs> yeah that was the basic idea really just putting you know building up a, a sides and a top um the everything's three quarter inch conduit um which uh, is bolted right to the frame of the trailer so there's a lot of stability there um and then the roof is bolted on top uh using a hanger uh hangers as a, as a support mechanism, but also bolted right to the maker pipe frame to the three quarter inch conduit. So it's, and, and then each of the footings for the posts, uh, I just took a two by four and screwed those down to the floor of the trailer and, uh, you know, drilled out the appropriate size diameter hole uh, to support the pipe as well. So this thing's rock solid. I, 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 I have zero uh, fear of them getting hurt. It's, it's, an, it's, I mean, I can jump on top of the thing and it's fine. Oh, that's great. Because I remember talking about a few of those details, like a flange, how you were going to attach it. So that's interesting that you used the, the block of wood method, drilled it and put the, um, the conduit in. And, and I think you used a, a lot of really unique uh, methods too that I want to highlight if we have some time. But here, here sure. it is, right? Is that yep. in it? There's a couple pictures that you shared. Yep. That's that's how it looks today. That's all pallet wood on the side. We try to upcycle everything here. Uh, all the barns for the goats are made out of pallet wood on a pressure treated frame so it won't rot, but the pallet wood does a great job. And we just put the decorative stuff on the side to make it feel kind of like a woody. Um, yeah, I and see it, that. <laughs> it offers some, uh, some protection for the goats too. And then the wire shelving in there, all that's from, you know, that all that's from the, uh, local recycling center the dump <laughs> so we try we definitely uh all the gates are from the dump we got as much as we could uh to upcycle to build this thing wow yeah that's that's neat because you had a picture of um some of the the wire mesh and how you yeah that's just the wire mesh with a you know a, a car washer and bolt going through it just to give some stability there but it's attached in like two or three different ways i think you'll see some plastic clips in there that got pretty handy too. I don't know what they're called. I think I got, yeah, there you go. Got them at Home Depot. So those fit super snugly around three quarter inch conduit. And as you can see, there's one hole there that you can put a screw through or a nut through or a bolt through. So those are all bolted into the frame of the build as well. And those kind of help hold the sides on uh, where the uh, wire shelving is. But those oh, things wow. are those things are really strong. They're And they go, like I said, they snap. They stretch out a little bit, just enough to get it over the three quarter inch conduit and they really hold well. Wow, that's fantastic, John. If if you don't mind letting everyone know or letting me know what those are, I'll do yeah, some I'll look, research too. Sure, I'll look it up. I I'm, I know I got them at, I th I know I got them at Home Depot and I got like a big box and I still have a ton of them, but they, they came in really handy. I'll use them for other stuff for sure. Great, yeah, I could see where those would be absolutely essential in a lot of ways and there's the shelving with all the bolts yep. onto the frame yep and that's, that's we yeah just there's lots of places to hang stuff we use a lot of rope in our work so we just hang big pieces you know big uh, uh bunches of rope on that or tools or whatever right and i see the uh the conduit um off the shelf conduit holders yeah, um, where you have the the screw up yeah. there, and then you can clamp on. Yeah, those just go through the roof down, and we tighten it down. And then where the bolt hole is, we take um, oh, what is that stuff called? Uh, uh, crazy guy that does all the commercials. Uh, oh, Flex Seal. <laughs> flex Seal. Yeah. We go over all the bolt holes with Flex Seal, which holds up pretty well keeps it waterproof that's that's the shelf where we put all our tools but you can see how many hangers that we used again it's probably overkill but i was kind of nutty about making sure that everybody was safe right yeah a lot of neat details i think you use i mean it's really creative the, all the hardware and fastening uh that you used um to so to solve this and then you recycled or upcycled a lot of the material yeah. too so that's fantastic lots I, of it yeah. Yeah, I, I love hearing that. You didn't happen to find the electrical conduit, did you? Uh, no, I did find a, a attachment that used in, in trailers a lot where you can uh, bore out a hole and put in a, a reversed uh, plug so that you can run an extension cord to the side of it and mount uh -huh. it right there. 
I haven't really needed to do that yet because everything's charged. I would only use it for charging batteries or running fences off of it. But uh, I, I might pop that in at some point. But it was a good way to easily run power to the trailer and have it uh, without necessarily having a, an extension cord hanging out all the time. Right, and you've got the um, you've got the light there. Yeah, those are little solar lights that work on a remote control, which is really handy when you pull up, you know. At the end of a long day of goatscaping, you can kick those on and see what you're doing and not trip over your trailer hitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't get banged in the shin by your trailer yeah, hitch. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but no, I, I, I was curious about the upcycled materials. You know, I, I really want to hear from the community, people finding electrical conduit that's been, a, you know, uh, taken out of a building or, or from scrap from a contractor or something. I hope I... I get to, to hear about that soon. Yeah, well, our recycling center is open like Wednesdays and, and on the weekends. And I, I, whenever I have time, I, I go down there and I go through the dumpsters like twice a week when I can. Yeah, that's, it's some good material for free. Mm -hmm. um, and you've got this, this knee, is that uh, a window? For the goats? Uh, that's, a sh that's just the opening for where my shelf is, where I can put all my tools and uh. just got a, you know, one of those, I forget what they call those hinges, but they, it's like a sliding hinge. And so that'll go up and stay up nice and solid. And I can put like four toolboxes in there or, or whatever I want on that big flat space. It's a really good size space. Yeah. Oh, that, that looks great. Thanks. That looks good. I, I love all the, the details of it. And um, is there any other of these photos that you wanted to highlight really quick? No, I think you hit on them pretty well. I mean, uh, it's, again, it was just really all about keeping it super safe for the, for the goats. And, and uh, I, know, I know we accomplished that. Like I said, I mean, I, I can climb on top of this thing and it, it's solid as a rock. So yeah, about that. I mean, since then we've built, we've built a small enclosure, it's just a temporary enclosure for some goats that were coming in kind of out of the blue. Um, and just basically made a frame and bolted plywood to it and that's held up through a new england winter which is pretty amazing uh we've also built um kind of custom sized uh uh crates or cages for goats when we're going out on birthday parties whatever that just fit right in the back of my jeep you know it's basically just a block a block, a block. Uh, but what's great is i don't have to move my seats in my car i can just build it to the size i want to build it to you know and just took some uh fencing material and just wrapped it wrapped the cage with that and just zip tied it down because the baby goats aren't going to mess with anything like that so it's cool well that's that's good to hear i'm glad you're finding it useful um yeah. you know i try to tell people you know build one thing with it and uh hopefully you'll find other uses you know as time goes on and whether you're able to reuse the connectors or you order more um you know we're happy to that you find it useful um yeah, no, they've been great. I mean, I've always, I'm, I'm always fixing something or building something. Uh, and I often now it kind of jumps into my head, like, could I use maker pipe for this, you know, when I first start something, you know, or, or is it going to be upcycled wood or whatever, but it was that thought wasn't there until I started using this stuff. So it's, it's good to know um, that there's an easy, easy way to build framing kind of stuff fast, you know, and it is, it's really fast. I mean, the, cutting the pipe with a pipe cutter is just like a piece of cake and, and uh, it's really easy to work with. Well, good. Yeah. I think, you know, cause building with electrical conduit outside of very few individuals is, is not a thing. People don't no. think of it as an option, but um, I'm happy that folks are finding it as a, you know, it's not something that they always use, but it's a good option for a lot of projects and helps them finish their their project, whatever it is. Yeah. I mean, it's strong. It, it doesn't rust as far as I've seen. And it's, uh, you know, it, uh, it's got a lot of stability to it, even over fairly long lengths. I mean, the trailer's like eight feet long. So uh, it, it's held up to that just fine. Well, good. Well, that's, that's great, John. And, and I'm glad you are successful with your project and your goats are, are moving around Dover, Massachusetts safely and in yep. a good way. Uh, no, all's, and, all's well, all's well. <laughs> good. And I, I wish you the, absolute best success with your business I, again you know if anybody's watching this i you know encourage you to go to goatsadover.com and check out um your goats and and the services you offer and 
And uh, it, it was really great talking with you and hearing about how you use MakerPipe. I, I want to thank you for that. I appreciate it. And thanks for making such a good product. Like I said, it was, at the time, it, you know, buying a off the, off the shelf uh, livestock trailer is like out of my range as far as price goes. And there's, you know, I needed, I needed to solve this thing quickly and it worked out great. So thank you. Yeah, you're, you're welcome. And, and nothing makes me happier than hearing also when customers are able to save money using our product, right? Because that's a total win-win. <laughs> Definitely did. Yeah. yeah. And I'm the same way. I'm looking for the economical solution and, and that, that's really rewarding. So thanks for telling me that. Appreciate the feedback. Sure. Is there anything else you wanted to uh, mention or, or anything no, else I can I would, do for you? I would just encourage folks that, you know, if you're, no matter what part of the country you're in, if you've got, you know, some land you need to clear, uh, do a little searching and see if you can find a company that's doing goatscaping because it's, it's, you know, there's nothing greener for the planet. I mean, it, it, it's a great way to get rid of the plants you don't want and to reestablish the plants that are supposed to be there. And, um, you know, we're not the only ones doing it. There's, I think there's probably three commercially viable companies in Massachusetts that are doing it. So I'm sure they're, uh, I've heard of them all over the country. So they're, you know, give, give them a shot because it definitely works. Well, great. Yeah, definitely. And I'll go ahead and link uh, Goats of Dover down below in, in the description and, and people should definitely check you guys out. We appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, sure. All right. Well, John, thanks again. You have yep. a great day. You too. Take care. Bye. Bye.